Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to look at some examples of using sampling distributions of the sample mean and calculating various items. So let's say that random samples of size 225 are drawn from a population. That population has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 20. Find the mean and the standard error of the sample mean. So here we can use our two properties. One that says the mean for the sample means will be equal to the mean of the population. So that one's nice and quick. The mean of x bar is the same as the mean of the population, or 100. For the standard error of the sample mean, that's our second property that says standard error equals sigma, which is the standard deviation of the population, divided by the square root of n, or the square root of our sample size. So sigma of x bar in this case will be equal to 20 divided by the square root of 225. Simplify where you can. I know that the square root of 225 is equal to 15. And 20 divided by 15 is 1.3 repeating. So I have my mean of my sample means being 100 and my standard error for my sampling means being 1.3 repeating. Okay, new problem. Let's say a population has a mean of 128 and a standard deviation of 22. Can we find the mean and the standard deviation or standard error of x bar if we took samples of size 36? Well, again, we know that the mean of our standard, or the mean of our sample means will be equal to the mean of the population, or 128. And our standard deviation for our sample means, also known as standard error, will be sigma divided by the square root of n. So in this case, that will be 22 divided by the square root of 36 square root of 36 is 6, so 22 divided by 6 gives us 3.6 repeating. So there we have our mean and standard deviation for x bar. Now using that information, find the probability that the mean of the samples of size 36 will be within 10 units of the population mean. That is, Find the probability that the mean of the samples will be between 118 and 138. Because we have samples of greater than size 30, so because n equals 36 is greater than or equal to 30, the central limit theorem tells us that we're going to be working with an approximately normal distribution with a mean that is equal to the population mean and a standard error that we calculated. So finding the probability of being between 118 and 138 can be accomplished using normal CDF. So we'll use normal CDF of, we know we need to give a lower bound, in this case 118, we need to give an upper bound, in this case, 138. And remember, we're using the distribution for x bar, so we want to use the mean of that distribution, which is 128, and the standard deviation of that distribution, which is our standard error here, okay? Now, it's really important when you're working with this that you don't use your rounded standard error. If your standard error does not come out to be a nice whole number, then you need to type in the unrounded version. So I'm going to type in here 22 divided by the square root of 36. Because the square root of 36 is 6, I also could have typed in 22 divided by 6. 
All right, working that calculation, I get 0.9936. So the probability that the mean of the samples will be between 118 and 138 is 0.9936 or 99.36%. All right, one more for us. Let's say that you randomly select 50 newly constructed houses in a particular area of Houston. The mean construction cost in that area is 181,000 with a standard deviation of 28,000. What is the minimum average cost of a sample of size 50 houses in this area to be in the 80th percentile? So because I'm working with a sample, I'm going to be using my central limit theorem here, my sampling distribution of sample means uh, calculations. So I'm going to start by finding mu of x bar and sigma of x bar. So mu of x bar will be the same as the mu for the population, which will be 181,000. Sigma of x bar is calculated by doing sigma divided by the square root of n. So that will be 28,000 divided by the square root of my sample has 50 in it. So although we're going to use that unrounded value there to do our calculations, we might be interested to know that that's about $39,059.79. Okay, so what's the minimum average cost to be in the 80th percentile? So because my sample is greater than 30, my central limit theorem says I'm going to be working with an approximately normal distribution centered around the same mean. So 80th percentile tells me that 80% are below my value. So if 50% are below my mean, then 80% might be somewhere over here. So I have 80% below my value that I'm interested in. Since I know the area and I'm looking for a value, I'm going to be using inverse norm. I'm going to give it the area to the left on my distribution. That's 0.8. I need to give it the mean of my distribution, which is 181,000. And then I need to give it my standard deviation for my distribution. Now that is, again, that's my standard error here, and I need to use my unrounded version. So that's going to be 28,000 divided by the square root of 50. So typing those values in, we get... 184,332 dollars and 65 cents would be the minimum price to be in the 80th percentile. All right guys that does it for this video on sampling distributions with sample means. We'll catch you in the next one.